All right. Um, so I have this box recipe and, um, you know, it's super. Um, I'll go ahead and change this to 12, 12 inches. This one to 12. Oop, I'll try to change this one to 12. Let's see, try a little harder here. 12. Um, let's say I want to make a column, um, you know, or at least a, a really primitive looking column. Um, I need to change this height. And first of all, I need to change maybe the max value for this height. So let's say I'm working in inches and I just have a, let's say, a 12 inch by 12 inch by, say, 15 feet or so um, uh, uh, tall uh, column. I change the maximum. I'll change it to, I'll just go up to like 200 inches. That way we can just adjust it later. Okay, there we go. And of course I could, I could constrain this to integers. Let's say I don't want like fractions of inches. Um, you know, 144, it's about 12 feet. Yeah, why not? Okay, now you're saying, gosh, Josh, that's uh, really nice, but that took a long time just to make a silly little box like this. Okay, and so, um, one of the things we could do, right, if we wanted to make, let's say, start to make a column grid um, as part of, a, a, let's say, a structural frame, is uh, we could begin thinking about, okay, we have this column, now how do we make more of these columns, and then how are these ordered, okay? And so, what's interesting about this, right, is that we're going to leave these values the same. What we really need to do is we need to change the location of this column, okay? And it's not necessarily that we're going to move this column around, um, but instead of just giving it one location and it makes one column, what we're going to do is we're going to make a bunch of locations. And what it's going to do is it's going to make a, a, a column at each of those locations. Okay, so this is a base plane. Okay, it's called X, Y, and its origin is set to 0, 0, 0. Right? It's really important. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to, to create um, a list or multiple locations or origin points to make a list of planes that can be plugged in in order to make a bunch of boxes, okay? And so this is where I think one of the, the, the key things, um, the key strengths of parametric modeling um, lies in that, um, you know, once you make something once, you can make it over and over again really, really quickly. Um, and uh, if we were scripting this out and actually writing programming in programming language, we'd, we'd write a loop and we'd say, okay, let's, uh, Let's start generating lots of different values and just keep looping through them um, in order to create columns at each one. Um, in this case, what we're going to do is instead of, we're just going to look at the inputs, right? So instead of having one base plane, if we plug in more than one base plane, we get more than one column, okay? So if we plugged in two locations, right, we get two columns. We plugged in uh, 10 locations, we get 10 columns. 100, we get 100 columns out, okay? And so what we need to do is we need to start generating more points. More points in space will be, the, in each point would be a location right, for the column, uh, for a column to appear, to be generated. And so, um, you know, I would argue this is probably a good time to talk about, first of all, points and how we generate points, and also uh, grids, right, um, sort of ordered set of points. I mean, we could make a bunch of random points, but, you know, there, there's no real structural logic to that. And so, um, and, and really, it'd be hard to, to distill a spatial logic out of that if it's completely random. Um, and so let's talk about grids. So first of all, um, again, let's refer to these tabs. We have parameters, math, sets, vectors, curves, surfaces, right? So vector, curve, surface. Those are really important, right? Vector includes directions and things like that. You probably learned about vectors in physics, a sort of direction and magnitude. Um, but they also include planes and points, okay? So if you need a, to make a point, right, you'll find this whole set of tools for how to make points and things like that and sort through points here in the vectors tab. We use points to make curves, we use curves to make surfaces, right? Um, so the same logic holds as in Rhino, right? Uh, you know, there's a hierarchy over here in the left-hand toolbar, points, curves, surfaces. Um, it's the same thing here, points, curves, and surfaces. So the easiest way to make a point is to construct a point from an X, a Y, and a Z coordinate, right? So, um, you know, by default, this point is zero, zero, and zero for X, Y, and Z, okay? Um, and so, this is what's kind of mind-blowing at first, but, and then you're like, oh my gosh, how, do, how did we um, operate before this? Um, if I just plug in a value for X and a value for Y and a value for Z, then I get one point out, right? Um, what it'll do is it'll match up that first value of X, the, the, first, the only value of Y and the only value of Z, and give me, you know, the point. 
Um, and in fact, I think by default, it's saying zero, zero, and zero. So we have a point here. This is highlighted in green. I'll zoom in on our point here. You can see that it's actually created a little point. That little X marks the spot there, right? Okay. And so you can see our point. Um, and in much the same way that we're talking about adding multiple locations into this input in order to make multiple columns, we can do the same thing here. To make multiple points, we can enter in multiple X and Y and Z values. Aha. Yes, yes. So let's talk about that for a moment, right? So we know how to make one point, and we can even make a point that's variable, or sorry, one number. And we can even make that number variable with, as a number slider, right? But what if we need to make like a list of numbers? Um, in this case, if we go to the Sets tab, okay, and we look at Sequence, we can create, uh, there's a number of different tools here to create different sorts of sequence of numbers, okay? And so the first one we'll look at here is called Series, okay? This creates a series of numbers, Series, S-E-R-I-E-S, -E -E just in case you can't find what I'm searching for and you want to double-click on the canvas and search for it, Series. There we are. All right. So what does this tool do? It asks for the first number in the series of numbers that's going to create. Then it asks for the step size for each successive number. So what to add to that first number in order to create the second number and the next number and the next number. And then how many values you want to, to, uh, to create. In other words, how many times do you want to add the step um, to the preceding number in the list, right? And so if we give zero, and a step size of one, and we do that 10 times, then we get a list of numbers out. And not surprised, it's 10 values, right? Because we said we want to do this 10 times to get 10 numbers. It starts at zero, like we said, and steps 10 times. So it goes zero, one, two, three, all the way to nine, okay? Now, you think this is relatively um, silly, but this is actually one of the most um, useful things you can do is to make a, a, an ordered sequence of numbers, right? We can always change any of these parameters, right? Um, we could make 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, um, or we could uh, generate 100 numbers by changing this input, right? Okay. But I'm just going to go ahead and plug this in for x and plug this in for y. And so I'm plugging in 10 values for x and 10 values for y, okay? And what we're going to get out is 10 points, okay? Now let's take a look at these points. I'm hovering my cursor over um, uh, the output, so you can see that there's 10 points generated, and then it gives the, the, uh, the, the values for each one, the x, y, and z values for each one. So it starts 0, 0, 0, then 1, 1, 0, then 2, 2, 0, then 3, 3, 0, then 4, 4, 0, all the way to 9, 9, 0, okay? Um, so what's interesting about this, uh, at least I find it interesting, <laughs> um, is that uh, it's matching up the data in particular ways, right? So we entered in 10 values for x, 10 values for y and zero values for z, or just one value for z, right? Just left it at zero, okay? And so what it's doing is it's matching up the first value with x with the first value of y and the first value of z. And so on, and so that, that works out really well. We get zero, zero, zero. Um, then it moves on to the second value of x and matches it up with the second value of z, or y. Um, so the second value of x, which is one, and the second value of y, which is one, and then it's, it realizes that it's run out of values in Z to use. And so it just uses the last known value for Z, zero. So that's why we get one, one, zero, and then two, two, zero, and then three, three, zero, and, and then all the way to nine, nine, zero, okay? So it matches up data one to one as much as it can between all the inputs. And then by default, if it runs out of a particular, uh, uh, if, if one list is shorter than the other, then it'll use the last known uh, value from the, the shorter list in order to complete the sequence and, and complete um, uh, the output. So we plug in 10 values here, 10 values here, zero or one value here, we still get 10 outputs, okay? Um, and so it's just replicate, or it's, it's repeating that last Z value that we used, uh, zero, um, over and over again, 10 times. Okay. Now, As you can see, I'm just going to zoom in here, right? You can see now that in Rhino, it's showing us that we've created 10 points. Uh, 000, 110, 220, 330, all the way to 990. Okay. And so 
Uh, what do we need to do? We need to maybe adjust the step size. That seems like really small. One inch uh, over and one inch over in the other direction is maybe not a big enough grid to uh, instantiate our column grid, right? Okay, and so we can, of course, make that a number slider. We're gonna have to change the maximum big time, right? All right, so let's say we're gonna go with a max of 30 feet and um, spacing on center between columns. Sorry, 30 feet times 12 would be, oh, I have to do the math in my head, oh goodness. Um, well, 10 times 12 would be 120, so 360. Say 360 inches or so. Man, I hate inches and feet, but we'll get over it. All right, so I'll plug that in for the step size. I'm gonna zoom out now so you can see that we have, we still have our, our points, right? And so if I plug this in for the origin of these XY planes, then suddenly I have 10 values for X and Y, so I get 10 points out. I use those 10 points to generate locations to, for X, Y planes. And then I use 10 X, Y planes as base, uh, base planes for creating 10 columns, okay? As you can see, there they are here, I promise you. So, um, that's all right, I suppose, right? But what we really wanna do is create a grid, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to change the way the data matches up, All right? So we're gonna go back to sets. I believe it's in sets. Yeah, it sure is. And go to lists, okay? And in here, there is, there are a few options. One's called longest list, one's called shortest list, and one's called cross-reference, okay? By default, data matches up already with longest list, okay? And I wanna use cross-reference. So what this is going to do, okay? I'm going to use this to plug in um, um, uh, our, what we were using, our list of numbers for X and list of numbers for Y values. I'm going to go ahead and cross-reference them, and let's look at the difference, okay? So first of all, I'm going to use a couple of notepads. And I'm using these. You don't have to do this at home. I'm just using these because it's helpful to sort of see what, what things are outputting, right? So right now, our series of numbers is generated. It starts at zero and it steps by 360 units 10 times, right? So we get 0, 360, 720, 1080, 1440, all the way up to 3,240. Um, okay, and so that's, that's what that's doing right now, right? And so we can plug it in for X and plug it in for Y, right? And so we'll get 0, 0, 0, and 360, 360, 0, and 720, 720, 0, and 1080, 1080, 0 um, is the sort of X, Y, Z locations of points, okay? Watch what happens when I cross-reference this list with itself. Let's check it out. We can compare. I'll go ahead and put this over top here. And we'll look and see what the outputs for A are. Okay. And what it does, interestingly, is it says it's made a much longer list of numbers. First of all, now there's 99 or 100 values starting at 0 all the way to 99. So we have 0, 360, 720, all the way to 3,240 again, right? But then it starts over and counts again, and it does that 10 times, right? And let's see what it does for the B output, okay? In this case, it's taken each of these values, and we have 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way down 10 times, then 360 10 times, then 720. Here, let's see, I was trying to zoom. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to scroll through the values, right? 720, 10 times, okay? And so what happens when we match these up for X and Y coordinates, okay? We'll get 0, 0, 0, 360, 0, 0, 720, 0, 0, 1080, 0, 0, all the way to 3,240, 0, 0. And then it starts over, 0, 360, 0, 360, 360, 0. In other words, this has already started to create all the coordinates that we need to make a grid. If I plug this one in for X, and this one in for Y, right? Suddenly, ta-da, I have a grid, okay? And of course, I can change the step size between each of these columns with this, right? And of course, the column parameters, its uh, width and length and height can be adjusted here, 
Yay. All right. So that's, uh, let's, let's really quickly summarize. There's more, there's easier ways and quicker ways to create uh, grid of points. However, what I did want to sort of bring up is this idea of data matching, right? Um, the idea that we can, um, not only can we make one interesting box, well, less than interesting box, um, but we can start to plug in, let's say, lists of inputs to make lots of different boxes. Okay, and, um, you know, uh, being able to create an order list of numbers, and then this cross-reference widget is really important. You'll use them over and over again, okay? Now, don't worry if things aren't quite clicking quite yet, okay? Um, a lot of this just takes a little bit of practice, right? And seeing it more and more in application, I think, also helps. So I'm just going to move these over, and let's see if I can get these organized a little better. Don't really need this, right? But essentially, you made a call-in grid. Ha-ha, <laughs> yes. Um, one last thing I'm going to do, and that is what happens if we ooh, create multiple Z values as well? What? All right, let's try this, okay? Let's create a three-dimensional grid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on this cross-reference widget. You know, you'll see that there's pluses and minuses. And so if I want to add a third input, I can hit plus, and suddenly C shows up. And I can cross-reference this and plug that in for Z. And I get the mother of all um, three-dimensional grids of points. Now all we need to do is sort of connect things up with beams um, going laterally, right? Okay, so not to confuse you, but... From now on, we're going to start using these a lot. Um, we'll do some more things with grids in just a bit. And uh, so just keep watching. Um, with this, I would actually uh, now start over, start the video over, and try to follow along, okay, and create this yourself, all right? Um, so have fun with that, and uh, can't wait for the next video.